welcome to part four in which we explore the fascinating world of item parameters and their mating habits. Like other technical fields, psychometrics is really bad about having multiple names for the same thing. The term trace line is an example. It's also known as an item characteristic curve and it's known as an item characteristic function and it's even known by those the initials for each of those as an ICC or an ICF. Though I've mostly been using the term trace line, a nice thing about the labels item characteristic curve and item characteristic function is the emphasis they place on item characteristics. You may recall that I mentioned two item characteristics that are estimated in item response theory, one being discrimination and the other difficulty. These are called item parameters. You see, there we go again. It just wouldn't do to have one name for it, would it? Besides discrimination and difficulty, there's a third item characteristic, and it's called guessing, but we don't usually use it in patient-reported outcomes. It's mostly used in educational testing. In the next few slides, we're going to take a look at how item discrimination and item difficulty impact the shape of the trace line slash item characteristic curve slash slash item characteristic function slash ICC slash ICF. Remember this item from part three? It's the shoulder function item. Can you touch your earlobe with your affected arm? Recall that the natural unit in IRT is the logit, and those logits typically range from around minus four to plus four. The trace line for this item looks something like this. For another shoulder function item, however, it might look like this one. See how the curve is shifted over to the right or it could have a flatter slope like this one or an even flatter slope look at this this one here that's a fairly flat item characteristic function or trace line what determines the shape of these trace lines are two things the items difficulty and the items discrimination before when we plotted the shoulder function of VP VH and M that is three persons with very poor very high and medium medium shoulder function I talked about the probability of a single person answering yes to the item. But let's move our thinking from the individual level to the group level. When we say there's a 0 0.01 probability, what we're really saying is that in a sample of 100 people at that given shoulder level, the odds are that 1 in 100 would say yes. When we say there's a 0.99 probability, we're really saying that in a sample of 100 people at that shoulder level, the odds are that 99 out of 100 would say yes. We can also plot the point at which 3 out of 100 are expected to say yes, and where 98 out of 100 are expected to say yes to this item. For every item, there is also some point along the measurement continuum where the probability is that 50 out of 100 people will say yes. Do you remember what that point's called? Go ahead, I know you want to. Say it aloud. It'll help you remember it if you do, and it also make anyone who's listening in think you're really, really smart. It's called the point of median probability. So, not to throw a dead horse down the well, but this slide shows you again what it looks like when you get all the probabilities on the plot. The trace line that, that is shown here is a prediction line. It predicts the probability of a given response for every level of the trait being measured. And notice that aqua colored X. So, what's that called? Yep, it's the median probability. Remember that IRT models, by the way, are falsifiable. So they predict the probability, but you can go out and test to see how good that prediction is. For example, suppose this line is the best trace line that the IRT model could come up with. But this is what actual observations look like. That would tell you that this item has poor fit. It's not working very well. So if you were developing a new scale and considering this item for inclusion, you'd probably not want to include it. And by the way, those kinds of decisions are usually a lot more a lot more difficult than this slide suggests. Take a look at these two trace lines, each of which represents the probabilities of saying yes to a different item. What do these lines tell you about the probabilities of responding to yes to each item? One way to answer this question is to look at where on the continuum the median probability occurs. That is, for each item, at what level of the trait being measured is the probability of a yes response 
at 0 0.5, the median probability. Well, for the first one, the purple one, it's at about, I don't know, maybe 0 0.2 logits. For the other one, the yellow one, it's at about 1.5 logits. So what does that tell you? What it tells you is that the item represented by the purple line is easier. That is, it's easier to say yes to. I know that because at a lower level of the trait, we estimated at 0 0.2 logits, I've already reached the median probability. I've already reached that point on the continuum in which there's a 50-50 chance of saying yes. But for the other item, the item represented by the yellow line, that doesn't happen until a good bit later. I have to have one and a half logits of the trait being measured before that median probability is reached. Now let's take a look at the that other item characteristic called the item discrimination and see how it affects the shape of the trace line. You can look at these lines and you can see that one item is more difficult than the other. Also notice that the slope of these the slope of these lines, item discrimination is represented by this slope. Again, the two items represented by these trace lines are different in difficulty, but you can see that they're equal in discrimination. Now take a look at these two items. These items have the same difficulty. For both of them, the point of median probability is around 0 0.2 logits. But look at the differences in slope between these two items. The item represented by the purple line has a much higher slope. It is far more discriminating. So what does that mean for an item to be discriminating? An item with a high discrimination does a really good job at sorting people on the measurement continuum. It discriminates among people who are at similar levels of the trait being measured, but not identical. So how does it do that? Well, zero in for a second in that range of the measurement continuum where the slope's very high for that purple item. It's at, at about uh, minus 0.8 to maybe minus 1.8. In that range of the continuum, you can see that small changes in trait level equal really big changes in the probability of endorsing the item. So what that means is that it helps you discriminate between persons who are close to the same level of trait but not exactly the same level of trait. You want items to do that for you because it gives you measurement precision. It sorts people out at fine levels of discrimination. Now, Look at that same range of the trait for the yellow trace line. You can see that for the yellow trace line, it, it also is going up. The probability is going up as the theta level increases, as the amount of trait being measured increases. It's just not happening so dramatically. This item is not discriminating as well as the other one. Remember earlier in the module I mentioned that Roche models only estimate item difficulty. They don't estimate item discrimination. So if you lined up a, a bunch of item trace lines, or maybe four item trace lines from a Roche model, they might look like this. They have different difficulties, but the slopes for all the items are the same. Now, why would you want to not model item discrimination? Well, that's probably better left to another module, but I'll point out that the Roche models, or also called one-parameter models, you didn't think there'd just be one name for them, did you? The Roche models have some very nice theoretical properties. If you want to learn more about this, I suggest that you look up work by David Andrich. Um, I believe he does the best job of anyone in arguing for the superiority of Roche models. If you don't know already, the decision about using one or a two parameter model can get pretty heated. There are proponents on both sides and they can get pretty snippy. Uh, personally, I remain agnostic. On another side note, Roche models are named after George Rash, a Danish mathematician. So the correct pronunciation really is Rash models. Um, and though I know this, I learned them as Rosh models, and I can't seem to switch those over. And also, Rosh just sounds a lot prettier than Rash. This slide may look familiar to you. It's very close to the one I showed you way back in part two, the one where I described the simplest IRT model, or the Rosh dichotomous model. The formula is almost the same. It expresses the probability of a yes response to item I as a ratio. But look at the numerator. You'll see a new term. It's an A there. This is this item parameter is the slope of the item. It's uh, called the discrimination, like we talked about. And you'll see that this A parameter is also in the denominator. 
One other thing before we leave this, I introduced the term B for difficulty to you early on, but I never told you its relationship to the trace line. You've already seen the relationship of discrimination to the trace line. So now it's time to explain why I kept asking you to repeat a phrase aloud at the risk of embarrassing yourself. For the dichotomous model, B, the difficulty of an item is its, wait for it, wait for it, and now say it with me, the point of median probability. Go ahead, say it aloud. Doesn't that feel good? If you want to learn more about item parameters, here's a great website. You can watch trace lines change before your very eyes. If you are a hopeless nerd and are interested in everything but what to wear, I recommend this website. It has a lot of applets that are IRT related, including one where you can put in different item difficulties and item discriminations and see the impact on the trace line. If nothing else, it will keep you occupied on your next conference call. So that's it for part four. Uh, in part five, we'll be talking about IRT information, be there or be square. As always, I'm eager to hear your ideas about how to make this module better. Mm -hmm.